Temporal Bone, Part 1 Introduction The temporal bones are paired bones that are situated at the sides and base of the cranium. Each consists of five parts. The squamous part, the mastoid part, the petrous part, the tympanic part, and the styloid process. The squamous part forms the anterosuperior part of the bone, which is thin and translucent. The mastoid part forms the posterior part of the bone. The petrous part is pyramidal and is wedged between the sphenoid and occipital bones at the base of the skull. The tympanic part is a curved bony plate, lying below the squamous part and in front of the mastoid part. The styloid process projects downward and forward from the undersurface of the temporal bone. Squamous part. The superior border articulates with the squamous border of the parietal bone to form the squamosal suture. The antero-inferior border articulates with the greater wing of the sphenoid. Posteriorly, the squamous part forms an angle with the mastoid part of the bone, known as the parietal notch. The outer surface of the squamous part is smooth. Temporal line, also known as supramastoid crest, is a curved line that runs backward and upward across posterior squamous part. The boundary between the squamous and the mastoid part of the bone lies about one centimeter below this line and is indicated by traces of the original suture. Zygomatic process projects from the lower squamous part and presents two borders and two ends. Its upper border is long, thin, and sharp, while the lower border is short, thick, and arched. The anterior end articulates with the zygomatic bone. The posterior end is connected to the squama by anterior and posterior roots. The posterior root of the posterior end of zygomatic process is a prolongation of the upper border. It runs backward above the external acoustic metis and is continuous with the temporal line. Supramedal triangle or McEwen's triangle, lying just superior to the external acoustic metis, is a surgical landmark used to locate the mastoid antrum. It is bounded in front by the posterosuperior margin of the external acoustic metis, above by the supramastoid crest, and behind by a vertical tangent to the posterior margin of the metis. The anterior root of the posterior end of zygomatic process is a prolongation of the lower border. It is short and broad and ends in a rounded eminence, the articular tubercle. The mandibular fossa is an oval depression behind the anterior root, which receives the condyle of the mandible. It is bounded in front by the articular tubercle, behind by the tympanic part of the bone, which separates it from the external acoustic metis. This fossa is divided into two parts by the petrotympanic fissure, which leads into the middle ear cavity. The internal surface of the squamous part is concave. It presents markings corresponding to the convolutions of the temporal lobe of the brain. It also shows grooves for the branches of the middle meningeal vessels. Mastoid part. The superior border of the mastoid portion articulates with the mastoid angle of the parietal. The posterior border of the mastoid portion articulates with the inferior border of the occipital bone. Its outer surface is rough and is perforated by numerous foramina. One of these, of large size, situated near the posterior border, is termed the mastoid foramen. The position and size of this foramen are very variable. The mastoid portion is continued below into a conical projection, the mastoid process, which is somewhat larger in the male than in the female. On the medial side of the process is a deep groove, the mastoid notch or digastric fossa. Medial to this is a shallow groove, the occipital groove, which lodges the occipital artery. The inner surface of the mastoid portion presents a deep curved groove, the sigmoid sulcus. A section of the mastoid portion shows several hollow spaces of variable sizes, the mastoid cells. Mastoid antrum is a large irregular cavity situated at the upper and front part of the bone. It communicates with mastoid cells. It is bounded above by a thin plate of bone, the tegmen tympani, and medially by the lateral semicircular canal of the internal ear. 
tympanic part. The tympanic part is a curved plate of bone lying below the squama and in front of the mastoid process. Its postero superior surface is concave and forms the anterior wall, the floor, and part of the posterior wall of the bony external acoustic meatus. Medially, it presents a narrow furrow, the tympanic sulcus, for the attachment of the tympanic membrane. Its antero-inferior surface is quadrilateral and slightly concave. It constitutes the posterior boundary of the mandibular fossa. Styloid process. The styloid process is slender, pointed, and it projects downward and forward from the undersurface of the temporal bone. It is a sharp spine, about 2.5 centimeters in length. Its proximal part is ensheathed by the vaginal process of the tympanic portion. Its distal part gives attachment to ligaments and muscles. Thank you.